Why are we getting persecuted? Well, let's take a look at 2 Peter, shall we? And verse 11, Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshly lust, which wage war against the soul. Keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles, so that in the thing in which they slander you as evildoers, they may, because of your good deeds, as they observe them, glorify God in the day of visitation. Why does persecution happen? Why could it be coming to our shores? So that you can respond well, be holy, people will see your behavior, and they will get saved. That is what Peter stresses in his book about persecution. This isn't about you. This is about other people knowing the excellencies of God through Jesus Christ. Now respond to their shellackings, their beating, their name calling. Be holy. Stop sinning against one another. And then when they see you endure persecution, they go, I got to know. Who's your God? And they get saved. Uh, Peter continues in this shocking book called 1 Peter, dealing with persecution. And again, what do we see as he continues? This isn't about us. This is about other people getting saved. Here's what he said. 1 Peter 1.13, Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether to a king as the one in authority or to governors, as sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and the praise of those who do right. For such is the will of God that by doing right you may silence the ignorance of foolish men. Act as free men, and don't use your freedom as a covering for evil, but use it as bond slaves of God. Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Why? Why do this? Why be obedient even when they hate you and persecute you and throw you in jail and beat your feet and lop off your head so that they will see Christ in you and desire him? That's what persecution is for. It is not really for us. More from 1 Peter. Servants, you too be submissive to your masters with all respect, not only to those who are good and gentle, but also to those who are unreasonable. For this finds favor if for the sake of conscience toward God a person bears up under sorrows when suffering unjustly. For what credit is there if when you sin and are harshly treated you endure it with patience? But if when you do what is right and suffer you're persecuted, for it, you patiently endure it. This finds favor with God. Why should we submit to a bad boss who really doesn't like us because we're Christians? So that we can bear up under persecution, endure it, be joyful about it, and they will wonder, what is going on with this person? He, she behaves so differently. I want to know who their God is. Persecution. It's not really for Christians. It is for the unbelievers. First, be submissive, because this is all a providence within the will of God, in God's purpose and in God's time and in God's way. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yield completely to the Holy Spirit and to His power and wisdom. And thirdly, boldly proclaim the gospel. That's the point. Submit to authority. Submit to a bad government. Don't be a meddler in the government. Get involved if you want to as a Christian. That's what you want to do. But you submit to the government, unless, of course, they tell you to sin. You just do what you're told. You endure persecution. You endure it with a countenance and an attitude that is supernatural. Why? Well, because... Um, it is supernatural. God has put the Holy Spirit into you to help you endure persecution. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is desiring to turn you more into the image of Jesus Christ who endured persecution far worse than anything we can even imagine so that others will see Christ in us and then the Holy Spirit will save them too. And the good news is you have God's promise. If persecution really comes at you, you don't have to worry. You have got God's Holy Spirit. Our Lord said, the time will come when they imprison you and kill you. Don't worry about it. When that time comes, you'll know how to react and exactly what to say because the Holy Spirit will show you what to say. Not only that, the Holy Spirit will strengthen you in that hour because you have a faith that cannot fail. You have a faith that will not fail. 
In other words, don't worry, Christian. God is saving people. He's using you. He empowers you with his Holy Spirit. He'll give you the words to say. He will help you endure when the time comes. And the worst that the world can do to you is kill you. The worst that can happen to us is that they kill us. And that would be our ultimate triumph, right? If you live a godly life in the world, you will be confronted and you will likely be persecuted. Submit to that with a gracious attitude. Don't retaliate. Christians don't need to get an army and go kill Muslims. And individuals don't need to return persecution with hatred. They are the mission field, not the enemy. You and I, Christian, are supposed to be soul winners as persecution hits. And you say, <laughs> how am I supposed to do that? Muslims cutting off people's heads, government and progressives getting all snarky toward Christians and getting involved in the church's mess. How can I love such unlovable people? Uh, and then you return back to 1 Peter 1, and remember you who were so unlovable was loved by God and purchased with precious things, and instead of persecuting you, God persecuted his own son on your behalf. Then you can love people who persecute you.